Turning to the new pressure on the racist conspiracy theory cited by the Buffalo shooting suspect in our special report right now. If you watched this news program, you may recall the debunked replacement theory that migrated from a discredited French right-wing writer into initially the fringes on the American right. We did an investigative report debunking it back in October. NBC's Richard Engel reported on the same author back in 2020, and other journalists and human rights groups have warned both about this French theory and how it's being peddled. Data shows global interest in this hateful conspiracy theory spikes either when mass shooters cite it, which happened with the Buffalo suspect, as you see on your screen, or in one other way, which is the highest spike you see on your screen when Tucker Carlson promotes it, which he's done over 400 times. Now, people know that Tucker Carlson pushes this on Fox. The company's already lost some advertisers over this kind of thing. But Carlson remains the most watched and profitable host on the whole channel. In fact, the New York Times recently reported that the Murdochs now give him more leeway than any host in Fox's history, though they're under more pressure this week as lawmakers like Senator Schumer are pressing Fox on its potential responsibility here. Tonight, the House may also vote on a domestic terror bill to further counter this kind of violence. Is any of this getting to Carlson? Maybe. Since the shooting, he's not exactly doubling down this week on his past peddling, although it's a bit of a complicated and mixed bag, because instead he's trying to now insist that he does not even know what this conspiracy says or entails. I'm going to show you him saying that. You can decide for yourself if you believe him, but I will tell you, as a matter of reported analysis based on his past work, his claim that he doesn't know what the theory is is absurdly weak a very lazy defense for someone in media who frequently covers this theory. But here's Tucker last night. You've heard a lot about the great replacement theory recently. It's everywhere in the last two days, and we're still not sure exactly what it is. We're still not sure exactly what it is. False. The evidence shows that it's false. Mr. Carlson's program shows that's false. And unlike some things that happen in the closed circuit of Fox News viewers, even if you only watch Mr. Carlson's program, you would have heard about this theory so much from him that you would notice he's lying. He's proven his knowledge of the theory by citing it knowledgeably, quoting it, and pushing it on air. But since he asked, and this is a big deal this week with the deadliest shooting of the year involving it with its suspect citing it, here is exactly what it is. The original conspiracy theory claims white Europeans are being replaced by non-white immigrants from Africa and the Middle East, which will drive the total, quote, extinction of the white race. Now, in America, white supremacists have more morphed it into a theory that non-white individuals are being brought into the U.S. to replace all white people and voters with the help of secret Jewish elites. Once you know this recent history, as Carlson does, you can also see what's clearly happening in our recent history. That's why that rally in 2017 about uniting the right-wing movement openly featured those ugly chants with the same terminology, chants against minorities and Jews replacing white conservatives. Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! You also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Jews will not replace us. You will not replace us. You will not replace us. That was August 2017, a time of great turmoil in America after Trump's election. You heard what he said about the good people there. And some people back then at that time may have been honestly confounded by that language. If you don't follow this stuff closely, if you're not educated on it, either from a human and civil rights perspective, because some people focus on these issues, or, God forbid, from the hateful side, that you're on those websites and you're reading Camus and you're into that. But if you're not in either of those groups, you might not have known about it then. But now, today, if you're informed, certainly you've heard about this. You will not replace us. They're talking to basically minorities. You and Jews will not replace us. They're talking to Jews. Carlson knows what this is. He's pushed it 400 times. He's continuing to spew it, which brings us to how he does it now. 
If there's a sliver of good news here for you, I'll offer it. I know what you're thinking, Ari, how can there be any good news here? Well, the sliver is that at a time like this, even Tucker Carlson doesn't want to admit he's pushing this racist replacement theory. Even him. And he's pushed it before. That reminds you that even in his universe, let alone the entire population of this country, which still has many people who would not truck with anything like this, this is not actually still acceptable, even in 2022, even with the people we've been reporting on the ballots. So he has to do this dodge until either this gets more acceptable, which may be what he wants and others want, or until it gets laundered to a degree that it's just one more politically debated item. So he has to do a dance where he says what I just showed you. He claims he doesn't know what this is, and then he continues to push it and peddle it in other laundered language, maybe trolling or maybe a way to have it both ways. So he goes on to say this. The great replacement theory is coming from the left. The Democratic Party has decided then, rather than convince you, people who are born here, that their policies are helping you and making the country better and stronger, they will change the electorate. They will change the electorate. So first he deflects and denies, then he repeats a version of it. Who are they changing the electorate? Well, according to replacement theory, which is this discredited and debunked form of racism that also plays into the authoritarianism we see rising in this nation, the idea that there's only certain people who are allowed to be citizens, certain people who are allowed to vote, certain people who should rightfully have government or police power, well, they are racial minorities and Jews. That's what Tucker Carlson has been saying while claiming he's not pushing it. And that brings us to one more thing we've prepared for you before we bring in our expert tonight. And this is new and different than some of what I showed you earlier this week. And this is important. Mr. Carlson has a long history here of playing games and worse with these serious facts, including violence and murder. He will downplay incidents of right-wing violence. Then he will ramp up his rhetoric about violent incidents that occur when more white people are the victims in a U.S. incident or attack. Any violence is wrong, of course. For Mr. Carlson, however, there's a blunt theme. He invokes replacement theory to scare white people about a minority Jewish invasion, denies he's doing so, and projects his and this theory's own racial, religious fixation out onto everyone else. Now, that may sound quite obviously hypocritical. There is a method here. It echoes an ugly history in Europe and elsewhere. When you're building these kind of movements, there are people who don't want to self-identify as racists or religious bigots. So they need propagandists and others to present the world through a laundered version of history and current events that offers a prism for people who might not want to admit or even realize they engage in this double standard. So we ran through it, we looked at the work, we put together this archive of Carlson's statements about different types of attacks to show the disturbing double standard. What he wrote does not add up to a manifesto. It is not a blueprint for a new extremist political movement. A black nationalist BLM supporter drove an SUV through a Christmas parade in Waukesha, Wisconsin. It was a slaughter. Because a mentally ill teenager murdered strangers, you cannot be allowed to express your political views. If indiscriminately murdering women and children at a Christmas parade isn't terrorism, then what exactly is it? There's no obvious ideological lesson to draw from all this, yet that hasn't stopped the usual power-hungry morons from trying to leverage human pain for political advantage. But it's still interesting to know a lot more about the man who apparently committed this crime. Frank James posted black supremacist rants on his YouTube channel. The only thing that could make what happened in Charlottesville worse would be if we allowed a small number of people in power to make America less tolerant and less free in its aftermath. Maybe if the entire news media tells you every day of your life that America hates you because of your skin color, why wouldn't we see more crimes like this? Why wouldn't we see more crimes like this? The framed rhetorical question is a very weak device. It's simplistic, it's unimaginative, but in some cases, although it can be easily dismissed, it's also quite dangerous. We're watching an election where people are on the ballot openly advocating authoritarianism and the end of democracy. And we're watching some of the most influential people in the nation tell everyone 
well, maybe there should be, quote, more crimes like this.